Hey folks, my name is Callahan. Welcome to Callahan's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to make your wheels on the back of your Volkswagen fit less like this, more like this. Stick around. All right, so today we got a project in for our buddy David. We're going to work on the rear beam for his Mark II Volkswagen GTI. So this is going to, you know, roughly be applicable to Mark I's, Mark II's, Mark III's. You know, all have the same basic rear end setup. So he's got some BBS RSs that are, you know, basically too wide to fit in the space. So he's having to run negative camber in order to get them up under the wheel arches. So our goal is going to be to narrow that rear beam so that we can fit those same big boy three inch lips without having to add the negative camber. Keep those wheels nice and straight, keep the alignment a little bit better, more tire life, better drivability, better looks. So let's get to it. So here we have the beam, the rear beam out of our Mark II. So basically what we're talking about doing is moving this mounting surface for our stub axles on each side inboard about an inch. Now, what that's gonna do is that's gonna move our whole brake assembly, our whole wheel, brake, everything inboard towards the car so that we get a little more space, you know, between the fender arch and the inside of the fender well. Now, the problem we're gonna run into is if we move that too much, we may interfere with the strut. So we've gotta find that happy medium and we've done some, some measuring and some figure, figuring and about taking about an inch from each side is gonna put us right where we wanna be. So that'll allow us to, you know, straighten the camber up on both of those wheels, get them fitting a little better, looking a little better while still running those big bad boy three inch lips. Okay, so first thing we did here, we got our beam all set up on the table. So I made these quick little beam mounts here, run through our OEM beam mounts here, keep everything locked in nice and tight so this beam doesn't move around while we're working on it. Our measurements can all be from the same spot. This thing's going to stay in exactly the same spot the whole time we're working on it. Next thing, I found these pieces of angle iron here, bolted them up to the mating surface for our stub axle. Got these on both sides. What that allows me to do is go ahead and measure, take some measurements on this, make sure that all of this beam is still square. Nothing's been, that is, this hasn't been in an accident, no damage, it's not bent. You know, everything is gonna, is starting off square. That way, you know, it's gonna allow us to, to end up much square much easier. So we can verify that both of our beam, our spindle mounting surfaces are square with each other as well as square with our beam mounts here. So our next step basically is going to be to cut off this mating surface here for our stub axle. So we're going to take this whole, this whole chunk right here, cut it off. We're going to cut this brace off because it's not really going to be necessary anymore. And then we're going to remove, you know, like I said, about an inch out of this, this area here. And what that's gonna do is bring this whole mating surface for our stub axle inboard about an inch. So, you know, thus giving us about an inch of space on the outside of the wheel there. All right, so we got this thing all set up. I've pulled some measurements on this already. We've verified that everything is starting off nice and square. Both of our stub axle mating surfaces are starting out square. They're both square with our beam mounts here. Our built-in factory camber is pretty consistent from side to side. We've got about a degree and a half built in. So we're going to try to duplicate that as best we can when we put these back on. All right, so we got this all set up. Let's get to cutting it up.
Okay, so we've got this side all cut down. And if you look at this, here's the piece we cut out. So including the curve from both of our cuts, you know, we removed right about an inch of material. So there, from here, we'll be able to put a tack weld on this, square it up in reference with our other side, square it up in reference with our mount point, use our protractor to find our degree, make sure that our camber degree is set where we exactly where we want it, and then we can fully weld this out. And you'll see on both sides of this, I've gone ahead and beveled all of these edges so that our weld gets maximum fusion down into here. And then we're gonna get back in here and weld as much of the back side of this as we can. This is the, the key point here, you know, if you're, if you're not a pro with the welder, if you've never welded before, you know, maybe get a buddy to help you with this, take it to a professional, you know, this is, this is what's going to hold the whole rotating assembly onto the car. So, you know, if we don't have good solid welds here, you know, this is a, that's a recipe for disaster. So we're going to get nice solid welds on both sides of this. Okay, so we've got this side all tacked on. We got it nice and squared up with the other side. Got our camber angle set right at 1.3. So we'll uh, get the other side cut off, tacked up. And then once both sides are tacked up and squared, we'll put the final weld on both of them all at once. got this thing all tacked up all, my, all of our measurements confirmed everything's right where we want it to be so I'm gonna take all this apart clean the table up that way we can get some nice big hot welds on these things and then we will uh, we'll get it wrapped up all right folks so we've got this thing cleaned up ready to start welding on it so you can see I've, I've taken it loose I've got all this tacked together nice and solid so none of this is gonna move while we're welding it but you can see I have stood this up the reason I'm gonna do that is so that I can perform all of these welds in the flat position and get as much heat and penetration down into that weld as I can. And I cannot stress enough, I mentioned before, you know, these welds are absolutely critical. So, you know, if you do decide to take something like this on yourself, make sure that you have a welder that's set up to do it. You can see mine, I've got 
230 power, like we're, we're good to go. We're gonna get some nice, hot, you know, welds fused all the way down into this. So if this isn't something that you're comfortable with, you know, find a buddy that's a welder, find somebody like myself, or, you know, there's plenty of other people that can do stuff like this. Don't risk it for the biscuit on something like this. This is absolutely critical. go ahead and get sleeved up for these next two mostly because we're at a higher more awkward position on a you know safety third and I can already smell my weld arc burn a little bit so let's try to mitigate that sunburn on these precious little forearms you can also see that I've got me a little piece of angle iron just clamped on here mostly just for a brace so I've got something to rest my hand on while I'm making this weld uh, especially when we're on a short, quick weld like this, you know, I want to be as smooth and as stable as possible. So taking a couple extra seconds just to set up something like this will just ensure that I get a little bit better motion while I'm making that weld. That'll do it. All right. Let's see what we got. Should have bought my big, big gloves home from work. The junk is hot. Oh yeah, that'll do, pig. That'll do. Sounded a little weird there at the startup. Maybe about time for a new contact setup. Still looks good though. Recap, so we got David's Mark II GTI rear beam all finished up. We took right at an inch out of each side, so we are narrowed, you know, an inch on each side so we can get bigger wheels with less camber and maintain those big badass lips that we like. So, um, he'll get this thing picked up soon. Hopefully we'll see it on the car with the, uh, with the wheels and everything fitting a little bit better. So, if you enjoyed watching, um, I hope you stick around. We'll see how many more of these I can get out of me in the summertime. As you can see, it is hot out here in the garage today. Maybe one day we'll get some air conditioning installed in here. So, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.